Hello and welcome to fresh new edition of your favorite program Science Monitor. A program that keeps you updated on all that is happening in the world of science and technology. First, let us take a look at the headlines. 11th of May celebrated as National Technology Day throughout the country. A new discovery by India's frogman discovers 14 new species of dancing frogs. Baba Atomic Research Centre prepares a new kit to monitor amount of chloride in water. Bark now hands over the technique so that the kit reaches masses. CSIR Himalayan Institute of Bioresource Technology Palampur gives away the technique to prepare a unique enzyme used in medicines. A special task force constituted for waste to energy project submits its report to the Planning Commission. And in our segment in depth, we shall know why development of society is possible only with the development of technology. And now the news in details. Every year, 11th of May is celebrated as National Technology Day. This year too, the day was celebrated with lot of enthusiasm and fanfare. Technology Development Board celebrated the day on 9th of May at Delhi's Raman Auditorium. Ashok Jhunjhunwala, professor at IIT Madras, delivered the keynote address titled Technology and Innovation Helping in Making it Possible. He spoke at length on new innovations being carried out in the field of power with the help of technology. Here is a report. The Technology Development Board, a statutory body under DST Ministry of Science and Technology, observed the National Technology Day on 11th May in New Delhi. The chief guest on the occasion was Professor Ashok Jhunjhunwala, who also delivered the keynote address on technology and innovation helping in making it possible. Secretary DST Professor K. Vijay Raghavan also presided over the function. Professor Ashok Jhunjhunwala in his address emphasized on the issues related to education and power shortage via UDS, the new system developed by him. Uninterrupted Direct Current is first of its kind system which guarantees uninterrupted power supply from the grid even during blackout situations. Designed by Professor Ashok Jhunjhunwala and Professor Bhaskar Ramamurthy and their team of Indian Institute of Technology Madras. Secretary DSD in his speech emphasized on the importance of innovation and technology not only in solving the problems of the people but also playing a key role in providing opportunities. He cited the examples of ATM machines, mobile phones and different applications which have brought paradigm shift in the way people led their lives. Meanwhile, Bhabha Atomic Research Centre Mumbai also celebrated National Technology Day on 12th of May, which was attended by Bharat Ratna awardee Professor C.N.R. Rao. The event was also attended by Chairman of Atomic Energy Commission of India, Dr. R.K. Sinha. Professor C.N.R. Rao gave a speech on the history of chemistry in India. Here is a report. The Baba Atomic Research Centre Mumbai celebrated the National Technology Day commemorating India's nuclear feats on May 12. The function was presided over by Professor CNR Rao, Bharat Ratna Awadi and head of the BM Scientific Advisory Council. BARC as a part of the National Technology Day showcased its recent achievements in chemical sciences and displayed a collage of the work done by BARC researchers inaugurated by Professor Rao. The researchers of BARC also had the opportunity to interact with Professor Rao, who complimented the nine Homi Bhabha Science and Technology awardees and motivated the young researchers to aim high in the scientific pursuits. R.K. Sinha, Chairman of Atomic Energy Commission, said, Many water and energy solutions had been developed by the BARC Chemical Sciences Department along with creation of high-tech reactor technologies. My own vision for India is, you know, in the 20, 30 years, America will be very old, Japan will be very, very old, China also is becoming old, Japan is so old that there are no people at all for teaching, for uh, nursing, for uh, doctors, engineers. So the entire world, when it is getting old, India is the youngest country in the world. 
till 2050, 2060, will India will continue to be young. So the entire world will need not be taken by military force. Indian manpower, Indian technology power can actually be running the world. The exhibition featuring Bach's work is open to the public and covers all aspects of science ranging from fundamental chemistry, material sciences and technologies for energy to societal applications like healthcare and agriculture. The exhibition will last for a month and will also be displayed at Nehru Science Centre at Worli, Mumbai on May 16. Dr. S. D. Biju, a professor at Delhi University, has discovered 14 new species of so-called dancing frogs in the jungles of Western Ghats. Dr. Biju was working on these new species of frogs for the last 12 years. He is also known as the Frog Man of India. To know more about him and the dancing frogs, we get to this report. In an interesting study of the biodiversity of the Western Ghats of India, a team of scientists led by Delhi University Professor Dr. Satya Bhamadas Biju has discovered 14 new species of dancing frogs from the forests of Western Ghats, India. Dr. Biju, known as the Frogman of India, among peers, along with his co-researchers Sonali Garg of Delhi University, K.V. Gururaja of Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, Yogesh Shauch and Sandeep A.W. of National Centre for Cell Science, Pune, has been studying the frogs of Western Ghats for the past 12 years. These newly discovered species of dancing frogs are found exclusively in the Western Ghats covering the states of Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Goa and Maharashtra. The family of Indian dancing frogs which is highly endemic is known as Micryxalidae and comprises of a single genus called Micryxalis. This family is known to have evolved about 85 million years ago. The information on dancing frogs of India is very limited and till now only 11 species were recognized in this endemic family. The new study by Dr. Biju and his team brings this number to 25. The dancing frogs are called so because of their unique mating behavior that resembles dancing and is called foot flagging. During breeding, the male frogs stretch, extend and whip their legs out to the side to draw the attention of females who might have trouble hearing mating croaks over the sound of water flowing through perennial hill streams. This is the first time such a large number of species has been discovered and described and the discovery is considered a crucial link in the efforts towards conservation of biological diversity of Western Ghats of India. Today, 32% of the world's amphibian species are threatened with extinction. Western Ghats is a global amphibian hotspot and this novel discovery is expected to accelerate the efforts towards conservation of amphibian population. Excessive amount of fluoride has been detected in groundwater in 17 states of India. Baba Atomic Research Center or BARC has now developed a fluoride detection kit for fluoride monitoring in groundwater. BARC has also signed a pact with Srinathji Kaya Kalpa Remedies providing them the technique in order to distribute the kit in Madhya Pradesh. Earlier, BARC had handed over the technique to four other companies as well. Baba Atomic Research Centre has developed fluoroid detection kit for fluoroid monitoring in groundwater. On May 13th, BARC has also signed a pact with Trina G. Kayakalp Remedies, Bhopal to provide them the technique for promotion in the Madhya Pradesh region. Around 15 states in our country are dealing with the problem of fluoroid contamination in groundwater. The fluoroid detection, which is developed in chemistry group, now is circulating all over the country particularly the, as you know that there are 15 states in the country which, are, which have the fluoride problem and it's a very simple kit which can be used to detect fluorine and determine whether the water is safe for drinking or not. According to the scientists, the safe level of fluoride in drinking water is 1 mg per litre, whereas in many places of our country, the fluoride content has been found up to 50 mg per litre. Due to this, adults as well as children are suffering from various kinds of fluorosis or fluoride poisoning in their states. 
To tackle this problem, National Center for Compositional Characterization of Materials at Hyderabad under Chemistry Group BARC has developed an innovative visual detection kit which contains a region to detect fluoride content in water. This kit is cost effective and very easy to use. Today if you see, uh, groundwater is the uh, major source of uh, uh, water for uh, drinking and in many areas of India you find that they are contaminated mainly with arsenic or fluoride and iron. BRC has a technology for detection as well as removal from these things. There are, you know, there are issues related to the uh, uh, health issues. Now, if you, your intake of uh, fluoride is more than the prescribed limit, you have a lot of problems. So, our BIC chemistry group and chemical engineering group, they work together and uh, come out with technologies for uh, fluoride detection, removal, and these technologies we offer to industry on a non-exclusive basis uh, at a very reasonable rate. By using this kit, safe and toxic levels of fluoride can be judged visually by change in color when the reagent is added to the groundwater. This kit does not need any special equipment and can be used anywhere. We take one part of the reagent and mix it with four parts of the sample groundwater. And if you get a pink color, it means the water is deficient of fluoride. If the sample color is pink, then its level is 1 ppm and it is safe to drink. However, if the color becomes yellow after adding the reagent, then it is toxic. This technology has also been adjudged as one of the best technologies by the UNICEF among 18 technologies in the world. Till date, this technology has been taken by four different companies and is being used in rural India, particularly in Telangana, Simandra region, Tamil Nadu and Maharashtra. Soon it will be used in Madhya Pradesh as well. And CSIR Himalayan Institute of Bioresource Technology, Palampur, has handed over the technique to prepare a unique enzyme used in medicines to a Kolkata-based company called Phyto Biotech. This enzyme, named superoxide dismutase, was discovered by CSIR during a survey at an altitude of over 10,000 feet in the western Himalayan region from a plant growing under snow cover. CSIR Institute of Himalayan Bioresources Technology, Palampur, has signed an MOU with its industrial partner, Phytobiotech Kolkata, to formalize transfer of technology for production of unique autoclavable superoxide dismutase SOD enzyme. The licensing has brought together the CSIR and the industry to enable commercial production of desired standard SOD so as to create a global niche for the country. Superoxide dimutase is a unique enzyme that was discovered by CSIR IHPT during a survey at an altitude of over 10,000 feet in the western Himalayan region. The enzyme is isolated from Potenti Lastro Sangonia plant that grows under snow cover. Researchers have cloned the enzyme producing gene to produce large quantities of the enzyme and also engineered the enzyme to increase the consistency and thermostability. While normal enzymes work only in a specific and small range of pH and temperature, SOD is known for its stability and functionality ranging from sub-zero to high temperature of more than 400 degrees centigrade and varying specific activity. SOD can be used in cosmetic, food and pharmaceutical industries for end applications like developing anti-aging creams, extending shelf life of fruits and vegetables and during cryosurgery and preservative of organelles. The Special Task Force constituted to look into waste to energy submitted its report to the Deputy Chairman of Planning Commission last week. The task force was headed by K. Kasturi Rangan and in its report, it calls for an integrated approach towards municipal solid waste management and also stresses the need for segregation of waste at source with private sector help. The report is being now sent to the chief ministers of all the states for use as a guideline document for integrated waste management. A task force specially constituted for working towards waste to energy has recently submitted its report to the Deputy Chairman Planning Commission. 
The report highlights the need for an integrated approach for the better management of waste, stressing on waste reduction and segregation of waste at source. In the report, the task force has specially emphasized on setting up of centralized or decentralized waste processing facilities, keeping in view the quantity and quality of waste generated and financial viability of the processing technologies. For this, the task force evaluated technological options, financial mechanisms and institutional arrangements to enhance resource recovery and promote waste to energy technologies. The task force was constituted under the chairmanship of Dr. K. Kasturi Rangan. The objective behind forming a task force was to identify technically feasible, financially affordable and environmentally sound processing and disposal technologies for municipal solid waste. The report will be sent to the chief ministers of all the states for use as a guideline document for integrated waste management. Urban India currently generates 170,000 tons of municipal solid waste each day. Only 19% of this waste is treated and rest goes to dump sites causing serious problems to health and environment. Seeing this alarming situation in the country, the report has also focused on the need to innovate appropriate technology which can convert the combustible waste into refuse derived fuel to be used in power plants based on RDF. Time to take a very short break here. We will be back with more science news. So, stay tuned. Welcome back. After the break, you're watching Science Monitor. And now, our next segment, Science Express, shall take you through an exciting journey that will show you some other scientific activities across the country and the world. The President of India, Sri Pranam Mukherjee, presented the National Florence Nightingale Award to 35 nurses from across the country on the occasion of International Nurses' Day on May 12th at Rashtrapati Bhavan. Also on the occasion were present Minister for Health and Family Welfare and other dignitaries from the Health Ministry. The awardees were presented with Rs 50,000, a certificate and a medal. Congratulating the awardees, the President said that nurses are the largest workforce in the healthcare industry in India and they, through their exceptional service and extraordinary dedication in the care of the sick and the infirm, have contributed immensely in the growth of the healthcare services in India. This week, Sri Avinash Chandra, DG DRDO, inaugurated a national test facility, rail track rocket sled penta rail supersonic track. This 4-kilometer-long RTRS Penta track will be extremely useful for the testing of wide range of critical systems such as payload for manned missions of ESRO, the navigation system for missiles and aircrafts, proximity fuses for advanced warheads, fuses for armament systems, parachutes for payload delivery, etc. The track built for this purpose can withstand high levels of load. The testing facility will accelerate the development of defense and aerospace technologies and products in India. India is now among the handful of countries in the world possessing this unique test facility. With the aim of making genomics-based diagnostic accessible and affordable for people in India, Strand Life Sciences has partnered with Mazumda Shaw Medical Foundation. Strand is a global life sciences and clinical genomics company headquartered in Bangalore. Under this partnership, a translation lab will be set up at the Mazumdar Shaw Center for Translation Research in Bangalore, which will be named as the Strand at Mazumdar Shaw SAMS. This is a major milestone towards enabling an ecosystem of personalized medical treatment for patients with cancer and other genetic diseases. Last week, the helpline was launched with an aim to guide and educate the young mothers. This breastfeeding and miscarriage support helpline has been started at the national level. The helpline number is 9643-822-920, which will be operational from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily and would also have the facility of callback service for night hours. The helpline is managed by experts who will provide emotional and remedial assistance to couples who have suffered miscarriage. The helpline will also help in eliminating fears attached to breastfeeding by answering queries of mothers. This is the age of technology. As soon as India gained independence, we have been marching ahead in the field of science and technology. And that is why we have created a niche for ourselves in the field of technology. In fact, we have gained expertise in every field. 
In our segment in focus, we shall today look at how technology has led to the path of development and success. The nation celebrated yet another Technology Day commemorating the science and technological achievements of the nation on May 11th. The day, dedicated to Indian science and technological prowess, drives home the message of continuous innovation for sustainable development in the globally competitive world. India, post-independence, has emerged as a global player in the field of science and technology, courageously treading along the trends of cutting-edge modern research. Indian technologies that range from technologies for sustainable agriculture and resource management to most modern space, nuclear and nanotechnology all have profound and pervasive impact. From being a technology-deprived country, we are today offering resources to identify global challenges and viable solutions for them. Over the 67 years since the independence, India has made immense progress towards food security. Indian agriculture has largely benefited from the advances made in the field of biotechnology. The development of superior yielding, disease-resistant crop varieties and innovations in farming practices and irrigation has resulted in quadrupling of food grain production and made India self-reliable in terms of food. Today, India is a hub of biotech parks dedicated to research and development in agriculture and food production. Similarly, the technological advances in health and medicine have resulted in the production of accessible and affordable genetic drugs, thus considerably reducing the mortality rate in the country. We are today a smallpox and polio-free nation. Telecommunications and IT sector of India is playing a key role in the development of innovative modes of idea exchange and fastidious communication. The advent and widespread use of mobile phone technology and internet is just one example in this context that is influencing people's lives and thus contributing significantly to the overall national growth. The computerization of institutions including railways and introduction of novel avenues of healthcare like telemedicine are indeed some of the significant technological achievements. India has emerged as a global player in the field of space technology. India today has all the expertise to design and launch its own satellites and have till now launched 74 Indian satellites of many types since its first attempt in 1975. The most recent Chandrayaan and Mangalyaan missions reflect the scientific competence of India in space technology. The application of space technologies have widely infiltrated many aspects of our daily lives and found applications in crucial areas like rescue operations, disaster management, aviation and marine navigation, environmental monitoring, agriculture and water resources management and many other areas. India has also made significant progress in the area of atomic energy. On 11th May 1998, Indian scientists fully carried out nuclear tests at Pokhran, placing India in the League of Nuclear Power Nations. The advanced nuclear technologies developed in the nation for the generation of clean energy has contributed immensely towards improving the quality of life of the people and achieving self-reliance in meeting the energy needs. Nanotechnology has emerged as another area in which Indian researchers have gained global excellence. The nanomission program launched by Government of India has resulted in some useful products like nanohydrogel based eye drops, water filters for arsenic and fluoride removal, nanosilver based antimicrobial textile coating, etc. These are but few superficial examples of achievements of Indian science. If one was to probe deep, it would be evident how profoundly technologies have penetrated the society, bringing about socio economic revolution. The huge impact science has on shaping the future of this nation gives a major impetus to accelerate scientific research. Not only researchers, it is also the responsibility of the citizens to strive to understand the recent developments and effectively utilize the existing technological knowledge to foster the development of innovative products, technologies and services to the nation. And what has been this week's contribution to the history of science? Let's find out in our segment History of Science.
British chemist Dorothy Mary Crawford Hodgkin was born on May 12, 1910. She had used X-ray crystallography to work out the three-dimensional structure of the atom of organic substances such as penicillin, vitamin B12 and insulin. For this pioneering work, she had been awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1964. The famous British doctor and physiologist Ronald Ross was born on May 13, 1857 in the Indian city of Almora. He was the person responsible for explaining the life cycle of the malaria parasite for the first time. This work by Ross showed how the malaria parasite works inside the body which helped in finding its treatment. The first ever vaccination for chicken pox was given on May 14, 1796. This experiment was conducted by the British doctor Edward Jenner on an 8-year-old boy. Jenner had used the cowpox germ to develop the chickenpox vaccine. On May 15, 1958, Russia had launched Sputnik 3 into space. This was the world's first ever auto-navigating space laboratory. It weighed 1,327 kilograms and as many as 12 separate instruments were used to send astronomical data from space back to the Earth. It remained in action till April 8, 1960. So how do you like our program Science Monitor? Well, do send in your comments and suggestions through email. Our email address is news at viganprasar.gov.in. You can also send us your suggestions by post. Our postal address is Vigyan Prasar, C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi, 11. 0016. That is all in today's edition of Science Monitor. We shall meet next week with more dosage of science news and lots of other exciting information. Till then, goodbye and take care.